everyone. Uh, hair care can be very tricky with chemical sensitivities. They can be tricky anyways. Because what works for one hair type won't work for another hair type. Which is already a big obstacle when it comes to hair care products. Without adding the whole chemical sensitivities on top of it. So, I have type 1 hair. It's straight. It's fine. It's long. And it tangles. <laughs> so, what works for me and my straight fine hair probably won't work for curly hair or coarse hair. Um, from what I've seen, there's not a lot of product options for people with hair types 3 and 4 curly hair to begin with. Um, from what those with that curly hair type have told me, finding a pre-made hair product, like at the store, that is fragrance-free, petroleum-free, preservative-free, and pesticide-free for that type of hair is pretty much possible. Um, this sucks for everyone, especially with the people with that hair type, because they're being poisoned by the only products out there. <clears throat> I really hope that soon someone is able to start a business and come up with a product that is safe for those with chemical sensitivities that also works very well with types 3 and 4 hair, curly hair, that is mass producible and has a decent shelf life so that it can be sold in stores. That would, um, that would be very nice. Um, there are some recipes I've seen on the internet for homemade curly hair products. Uh, I don't know if they work. I mean, I don't have curly hair. Um, but hopefully they're a good option for those who can't find a safe hair product. Um, of course, if you're going to make your own, skip the essential oils. Um, I can only speak to my experience, which is straight, long, fine hair. But I found that less is more when it comes to hair products. Um, I also don't put a lot of effort into my hair. Because it's so fine, it just tangles so fast. So I keep it in braids. Then it's controlled. It's not really going to tangle it because it's in braids. So I don't have to pay for detangling products or make a detangling product because it's contained. So I wash my hair mostly with water. I'm in the shower, I'll just give it a scrub just with water. Um, about once a week, it's not like on this day I'm going to wash my hair, it's when it gets feeling really, really, really gross, which is about once a week, I will wash my hair with shampoo. Um, cutting back from every day to about once a week has actually helped the health of my hair substantially. It breaks less now. And it's, it's been over two years since the last time I cut it, and I'm only now starting to get split ends. So, that's pretty good. Um, personally, I have been using the Rocky Mountain Soap Company's Scent Free Shampoo. Um, my boyfriend uses the Karina, Karina? Green Organics Unscented Shampoo. Um, the only reason we use different ones is because for a while there, Rocky Mountain Soap Company stopped selling. Well, really, they ran out of the old stuff before they released the new formula. And so we found him something else so that we could stretch out what I had of the Rocky Mountain Soap longer. Um, I'm not bothered by what he uses, so I could probably use it, I just haven't. I bought the new formula for the Rocky Mountain Soap and it seems to be okay. For conditioner, 
I personally have stopped using conditioner in my hair unless I have had an exposure and it has coated my hair. <laughs> Your hair is porous, it will hold on to fragrance. So when that happens, I wash my hair with conditioner first before I'll wash it with shampoo. Um, I also wash my body with conditioner in that situation because the oils and the conditioner will help get rid of the fragrance oils versus just using soap. Anyways, so for conditioner, um, what is currently in the house is the Rocky Mountain Soap scent-free conditioner. Um, I have also started using diluted apple cider vinegar. Um, so I'll wash my hair with my shampoo or just water and I will put diluted apple cider vinegar in all of it. It's, it does help remove some of the buildup on your scalp, but it's also a great detangler. And I've actually found it works better than most conditioners for being able to brush my hair out after I've showered. And it does seem to help with the, uh, the health of my hair. So, I've been told and I don't know if this is true, <laughs> but I've been told that there is a transition period from when you're changing from the standard chemical and petroleum-filled products to the cleaner, more natural products. So what happens is your scalp produces oils naturally, and it takes a while for it to figure out it doesn't need to produce as much because you're using better products. So with the new products, you might have really greasy hair for a month or so until your body adjusts. Um, if that happens, just try to work through it. <laughs> um, personally, I did not experience this. Um, my hair was like straw, it was horrible. And you know how you're supposed to use like a little bit of something? I would have to fill my whole palm and it would be piled high with conditioner just to get through my hair with a brush. Um, <clears throat> at that time, it was before my chemical sensitivities even started, I, um, I changed products from the Costco sized whatever they happen to have to Rocky Mountain Soap Company whatever they sold in 2014. Personal choice at that time, and I did go fragrance free. Um, I switched products and all of a sudden my hair was happy. It was doing way better, I could get through it easier, I didn't need to use nearly as much product. So I didn't get through like the, what they said at the store might happen. Um, when I got sick, my boyfriend was forced to change from the Costco sized whatever they happened to have to what I was using and um, neither of us really noticed that his hair got greasy, but it didn't bubble for him. Like I get a decent lather, it's not as much as stuff with the foaming agents, but for him there was no bubbles. There's still no bubbles <laughs> when he does, washes his hair. Um, he was able to get over the whole misconception of bubbles means it's working, because that's just not true. Um, however, I know people with the same hair type as my boyfriend who I have purchased safer products for, but again, there's no bubbles because they have the same hair type. And um, they decided that it must not be working and tossed out that really expensive bottle of shampoo. But <clears throat> that's, that's a thing that might happen. Um, you might not get bubbles when moving from something with a foamy agent that's been added to something without a foamy agent, 
it still works. Just keep reminding yourself it's working. <laughs> It'll be okay. Um, for styling, I can't recommend anything because I haven't tried anything. And all styling products seem to be super heavily scented. There are recipes for flaxseed gel online for styling. Um, some people have said that the Karina, Karina Organics unscented line of styling products is good. Personally, I haven't tested it. My hair has never styled well, even before products were an issue. So I'm like, I'll just stick with my braids. For those who are very good in the kitchen and have the time and know-how and all that jazz, they can make their own products. There are recipes for all sorts of things online. Um, in my hair, I have used both liquid hand soap and bar soap in a pinch. Um, they are options. I don't recommend using them all the time without diluting and adding an oil because it'll probably just slowly fry your hair over time. I have looked into shampoo bars a little. Um, I haven't found one that's fragrance free and what we have for the liquid shampoos seems to work well. So I haven't really looked that hard. Um, personally, I'm going to keep washing my hair shampoo about once a week. Um, keep it in braids to make it more manageable and also minimum, minimize product use. Um, some people have done the whole buzz cut to make it easier ma to maintain in this product. Um, <clears throat> for those who are struggling with uh, maybe it being a little greasy on top, your ends are always going to be drier than near your scalp. So what you can do if your brush isn't pulling all the oil down is to take your ends and rub it up by your scalp and that'll help make the ends give them a bit of oil and your uh, they'll pick up some from the top here. In terms of dry shampoo, I haven't looked for a pre-made one. Aerosols are not something you want to use. Um, but there are recipes online for like homemade dry shampoo using cornstarch or arrowroot powder, and maybe some cocoa powder to darken it a bit because it can get quite uh, white. <laughs> um, less is more with that, and then it's going to have to sit for a couple hours to absorb stuff. So. Don't worry if that doesn't work right away either. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.